If you could take a pill that would make you smarter and live longer, would you? That's the promise of smart drugs, a part of the biohacking trend that's blowing up around the world. I'm a futurist. I fly all over the world most weeks as a keynote speaker and media personality. I've got to start with futurist. This is a thing. This yeah. is a profession. This is your profession. What is it? Yeah, so um, I got hugely curious about the world of technology. And since the age of 10, I've been on computers, but really worrying about how technology changes the dynamics of how we interact. I spend many hours every day producing podcasts, doing conferences, speaking at places. This is one of the coolest things I think that I've read about most recently. There's this new trend that's gaining popularity right now. It's called biohacking, and it's changing how we operate in the world. We can think of our bodies as computer systems. So why not make every possible effort to optimize our inputs? So biohacking is a combination of supplements, treatments, and smart drugs that make you smarter, stronger, and hopes to make you live longer. It used to be the stuff of science fiction depicted in films like Limitless. But this is real. It's a reality which fuels some of the most successful and creative people in San Francisco. I wanted to find out if they work for me. I travel for work and it gets stressful, especially because I work a lot. But then so does everyone else these days. It's the new normal. In the year of 2017, I'd done 50 keynotes, over 40 flights. I had no time for relationships. I was single for over two years. It was week in, week out, bounce, 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 and I never stopped. It's like you've been like holding your breath for eight hours and then suddenly you relax, but your body's completely shattered. Huh? What? Oh man, I was just about getting going off then. It was really, really tough, and you get to a point, I like to call it peak stress. I burnt out really bad before, like to the point of thinking that like things were gonna go very negatively like health-wise. So uh, I'm not gonna let that happen again. Hello. Hey, Douglas. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's been busy. I've been, uh, been flying around. I really need to use new thinking if I want to survive the upcoming speaking season. I decided to look into nootropics or smart drugs as they're known. Designed to improve cognitive thinking, it would be cool to think that I could maintain an edge on demand. A lot of white collar workers like developers, Designers and engineers use this. The global cognitive supplement market was $2.3 billion in 2015, and that's going to rise to 11 billion by 2025. I thought maybe there's an opportunity Maybe the smart drugs can help me work faster, do more, and not be so tired. And that sort of really started getting me to ask the questions around, what can smart drugs do for me? So I went down to San Francisco and Silicon Valley, to the heart of the biohacking scene, to check out what's really going on. It's like going to the mecca of technology and new thinking, right? The West Coast, you know, this is where the counterculture really kicked in. It's the birthplace of the personal computer. 
you just feel that there's a frisson of collective energy around innovation. People are willing to take big chances, funding technologies that are gonna change the world, and that's bled through into this, this cognitive supplement or nootropic market. And I think that that's really exciting. There's a range of nootropic and smart drug companies out there. One of the most talked about is a company called Human. It's gotten a bunch of venture capital funding from some very well-known investors. I felt like there's definitely potential there. Hey, welcome to our San Francisco office. Thank you. Um, feel free to put your bag down. Thanks. You can see our different suite of products from Go Cubes or Chewable Coffee. A nickname for this is like coffee that you can't spill. Yeah. Right? And then you have our mainstay entry into the nootropic space, the Nutribox full stack, which consists of two chronic daily nootropic stacks, which are Rise and Kato, and then what do we call like acute nootropics, Sprint and Yawn. Right. Sprint, uh, kind of a more intellectualized version of, of Go Cubes, and then Yawn, uh, optimizing sleep. Yeah, let's go for it. Cool. Okay, so, so just take one of these. And two of those. Two of these. Yes. And, and these, uh, these just like help g give me that edge, right? Yeah. Okay, I've got some trepidation about taking these, um, but like I'm going to trust you on this. Yeah, no, everything that we sell and manufacture is FDA generally regarded as safe, so very low side effects. Noth nothing bad's going to happen to me. You're in good hands. Just, just positive effects, right? Yes. Okay, step one. Good. That's done. And then we get into the, the Kato yes. as well, the Kato 3. Yes. Okay, here goes nothing. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. You know, in, in a short while, and I want to... Want to be like, in flow state? Get, yeah, yeah flow state, get, get through some work, um, do a bunch of research that I need to get done yeah. for the presentations I've got this week. So yeah, this is where I get into sprint, right? Yes. Okay, ready? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So, okay, so that's that's the full stack, right? I see the future of biohacking as having just full-time continuous control and understanding of your system. So that to me means that you have a dashboard of all your key biomarkers, glucose, ketones, things like cortisol, hormones, et cetera, and having a toolkit of different interventions that can manipulate those biomarkers. For a human ketone, for example, I like to tell people to actually do finger sticks uh, to measure blood glucose and blood ketone levels and yeah. actually measure that. The military has always had a very keen interest in enhanced human performance. Our ketone ester drink, uh, that technology originated from a DARPA program to develop super fuels to enhance warfighter performance, especially physically and cognitively demanding missions. Nootropics to me really are an extension of what I think is a core human instinct. I think what distinguishes us with other animals on this planet is our desire to manipulate our environment in, in more broad and general ways. I mean, we're a species that, you know, started off as a little more than advanced monkeys and we're in, you know, these concrete forests now. So I think nootropics Extending our ability to conquer and manipulate things with our mind is core to being human. In the 70s and 80s, there was the Homebrew Computing Club in Silicon Valley with weird computer hackers tinkering on silicon parts. And I really see biohackers as the intellectual descendants of the Homebrew Computing Club, where instead of hacking on silicon parts, we're now hacking on our own biology. And I think if we do our jobs right, everyone will incorporate parts of biohacking in their life. So I'm going to try these Rise and Kato 3 pills. Let's see if I get smarter. Oh, 
I doubled down on, on the rise in the Kado 3. That didn't really give me anything, you know, I, I think a little bit of a like, you know, more awareness didn't feel super strong. And then uh, a little later, I actually uh, delved into the Sprint and it was pretty different. It's got a lot of caffeine in it. It felt super uncomfortable for the first sort of 30 minutes. For me anyway, I, I've got a, quite a big reaction to caffeine. It didn't feel so comfortable for me. I wanted to find something that had an immediate effect without making me feel jittery. I knew there were other kind of supplements that didn't actually include caffeine. I read about Eric Matzner, this rebel alt thinking San Francisco guy. He didn't want to be associated with other nootropics companies. He's out there running his own race and flying his own flag. So my office is in the Mission in San Francisco. Hey Zoe. It is the world's first nootropic store, and it's the world's first nootropic store inside a bikini store. Neutro is my own company, um, founder, CEO. Uh, I like to be hands-on with it and kind of see who's ordering, what they're doing. I like to answer the customer service emails and things. And because I can type 150 words a minute, I can just fire off a response you know, three times the normal speed of a, of a customer service agent probably types about 50 words a minute. The nootropics power me to run it and are something that I take every day as I work on it. So this is a game called Type Racer and I can measure my typing and I have like an actual score from when I first started. You can see I went from like 85 to like 140 on here where I've increased my typing speed to what is considered the 99.9 .9 percentile. And this is what biohacking is about, is taking that thing, measuring it so you can then track your improvement over time. I gravitate towards the fastest cities in the world. About five or six years ago, I was living in New York. I was working on a startup. And when I started back then, there was really nothing but like mylar bags of powder from China. And you didn't know what you're getting and if it's dangerous, if it's been tested. And so I started making my own pill. But when you have a, a scale and you're sitting in the office weighing out powders or something, it doesn't necessarily look uh, good. I also had friends who were seeing my own performance game, saying, how can I get access to what you have? This is kind of unfair. So I started making it for my friends and then kind of branched out from there and have come a long way since on the fourth and fifth version of it. Hey, hey Eric, how's it going, man? Good. How you doing? Yeah, come good. Okay, so this is this is it. Welcome to my uh, supplement uh, regiment area. <laughs> my day starts with the Nutro every day. I mean, yeah. honestly, that's the beauty of a Nutro is that you don't have to think about right. it. I could go for a gold now. Coenzyme Q10 is uh, part of the mitochondrial uh, biogenesis chain. This will turn into something called ubiquinol, which will then give off an electron to start the electron transport chain. I like acetyl carnitine, works with the mitochondria. I like creatine a lot. This thing will make your skin tingle. Ow. Look at this color. See how dark it is? Yeah. So it's going to oxidize really quickly. Quercetin is a really nice one. It's like every flower and plant has quercetin in it. And this is a really nice synergy with bromelain, and these are like enzymes. And this is pretty experimental and was shipped to me off of somebody on the internet. These are peptides for the eye. These are from Russia, straight up in Russian. This one has some properties with the male uh, sexual reproductive uh, uh, benefits as well. Yeah. Because so I take so many, I have to do like big handfuls. Whoa, seriously. So that's something, that was like something that. like 12, 13 pills, right? This feels pretty extreme. Um, who is the target audience for this? We have a lot of customers here in Silicon Valley from all the different major companies. And you know, they're working on things that can save people tons of time, that can help connect you with a charity, that can help put you in an autonomous car so you don't risk your life. 
everybody that's working on something that can affect the greater society is kind of what I hope to help them achieve so that they're having a greater impact. At the beginning, I was originally skeptical of Eric and Nutra. He wants to live forever. He wants to live as long as he can, right? So are some of these people crazy? Well, you know, here's to the crazy ones, right? That's the mantra of, of the past, like, three or four years. It's like, we need to prevent, you know, the onset of aging. Some very famous futurists like Ray Kurzweil have got a huge regime around supplements. We're talking, like, over 100 pills a day now. These guys are, are onto something. These are some of the smartest men and women in the world. So yeah, let's pay some attention to that, right? Just like a true biohacker, I started my own spreadsheet, entered all my information to see how I was progressing. Okay, I feel pretty, pretty hyped up. I need, I, I gotta do some stuff now. I'm just fucking buzzing my ass off over here, right? I can't sit down even. <laughs> I'm like, How many of those just one. I need a way to be able to like run around and use a laptop at the same time. <laughs> so maybe that's it. Maybe I need to go to the gym and put my laptop on it and go running. Yeah. But what, yeah. Actually, it like The way that I liken it to is you take all the energy that you've got available to you and you burn it in a very, very short amount of time. So your physicality, your, your focus, kind of felt like I could really go bigger. That's really interesting. I normally suck at press-ups as well. Caffeine and some uh, phenoparacetam makes me feel sassy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Nicholas Badminton. Thank you very much, thank you. Okay, ah, okay, people can hear me. How's it going so far? It's pretty good so far today, right? Three people are ready. Are we ready? Okay. <laughs> I actually chose to do a keynote. My friend introduced me on stage and about an hour before we both did a, a gold pill um, from Neutro and I don't think I can use it when I'm speaking on stage. You know, people were saying like, oh, you know, got, you've got like two minutes left and I had at least 15 minutes left on my keynote because I was talking and talking and talking. Um, I think that's part of like the, the focused in because you do, you go, you go into yourself and then you get into the work, but you've got to have a broader perspective when you're speaking on stage. You need to be a little bit more aware. I need to have that outward looking vision a little bit more. The Neutro Gold is a big nootropic, you know, like a big, bold red wine. And it's quite powerful. So uh, I don't always want that every single day. I've been mixing different pills on my own and all my doctor could tell me was to be careful. Nootropics are like the wild, wild west of supplements. A lot of this is unregulated. Maybe I should try something else apart from these pills. There's other ways to biohack aside from taking those things. I'm gonna go back and see Jeff and his team at Human. They fast regularly and I think I'm gonna try it too.
Fasting has been a huge anchor of our company and really the community of biohackers in San Francisco and abroad. Yeah. Uh, when we first started fasting two years ago, it was just a few of us at the company, and now we have tens of thousands of people in our online communities yeah. fasting with us every single week. Yeah, so fasting meaning not eating for, for a specified amount of time, like say 24 hours or 36 hours, in yeah. some cases even longer. Yeah, right? so no calories, just water. Just water. Yeah. Right, okay. So I've never done that before. So I, I'm sort of keen to try the fasting as yeah. well. And I think now, what can I expect from that? Because I don't do so well when I don't eat. No bullshit. It's going to suck when you first do it. <laughs> I mean, I think when I first started fasting, it was hard. Our bodies are addicted to constantly eating something every yeah. couple hours. Uh, and that's based on being driven by carbohydrate and insulin on a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. The reason why we fast is not for weight management or weight loss. We fast because we want to live as long as possible, hopefully forever. Mm. Not, and not just live forever, but also be very productive and cognitively focused while we live longer. Especially in our neck of the woods in Silicon Valley, getting that cognitive edge is, is huge. And I think nootropics and fasting are a couple very, very compelling ways to activate those pathways. Right now in San Francisco, it's 57 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Start a seven minute workout. Welcome to seven minute workout. Just say start workout. Start workout. I am fairly driven, especially since I've been taking nootropics and specifically working to optimize myself. I've kind of built a daily routine that enhances my motivation and kind of lines me up so that I become task oriented so that I can accomplish more. An average reading speed is about three to 400 words a minute. College professors at 500. I can read around 800 casually and I can skim over a thousand. Sometimes I worried maybe that I'm too task focused, that I don't hang enough. Uh, you know, I made a resolution to hang out more this year. To help the biohacker movement, I run a nootropics and optimal performance meetup. We also have just launched a meditation battle league, which I'm really excited about. I signed up for this meditation deathmatch and I really can't get my brain straight since I've been fasting. My brain goes in 500 different directions and then someone walks by with a cheeseburger. Georgie, do you want to sign up for the meditation battle? Yes. I'm going to kick your ass, man. We'll put you in the bracket it's for the end of the year party. We're when you do. goad people, it's like, I'm so fucking relaxed, man. <laughs> so At the meditation battle, I met startup tech entrepreneur and biohacker named George. He's also a user of Eric's Nutri Pills. George is experimenting with other optimizing techniques like LSD microdosing, and that's becoming popular in biohacking culture as well. In Silicon Valley, this is a place filled with people who are unafraid to experiment. Uh, they will test things on themselves. It's kind of a biohacking capital of the world, really. A nootropics is something that I've experimented with. When I'm not using that, I will use Adderall. And when I'm not using Adderall, shockingly, I'll be using LSD, tiny, tiny, small doses of LSD. They call it microdosing. Microdosing is taking one-tenth of what is considered a party dose of either psilocybin from mushrooms, it can be LSD, in order to get a tiny, tiny benefit of the drug without going into full trip mode. The way to describe it, it does almost nothing for you. You can't even tell that you're on it. The irony is that you're able to get more done and feel more connected to your work and you're like, wait, how did this even happen? Hey, George. Hello. How you doing, man? So I want to let you know that on, on Saturday um, at 11, yeah. we're going to be doing our monthly Wim Hof meetup. Oh, um, excellent. Yeah. And that's when we're going to freeze our asses off? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, see you then. George recommended I come down to the beach and meet a couple of his friends at another meetup. We're gonna try out the Wim Hof method, another way of biohacking that uses breath work and freezing cold water immersion. How are you guys doing? Beautiful day. Oh, what's up, hey, buddy? Man. 
How you See doing, George? Buddy? How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> All right. So we're doing the Wim Hof breathing technique. And to start, um, we're going to have four sessions of about 40 breaths each. So each breath should be fully in. <coughs> and then you let out about 70%. In the end, um, we'll, we're all going to jump into the ocean uh, together and we'll sit there for about five to 10 minutes and soak in. And if at some point when you're entering to the water, you feel like you're gonna shiver, just try to consciously block that. All right, so just to begin, take one breath fully in. And then let go. Not all the way let go, just fully in. 70% out. Keep going. You might start realizing if you get lightheaded, it's perfectly normal. You get some tingling sensations, it's all very normal. Just stay relaxed. Last one, fully in. Fully let go. The most fun part is jumping into the water, into the cold water. Yeah, right. Fun. <laughs> yeah. And then just, you just breathe through it and it works out. A lot of the work continues inside of the water. I'm gonna do it every single week. Right, all right. Yeah. Nice job. It's true. It's true. It's like it's insane. It's absolutely insane. It's exhilarating. Oh, I'm so energetic right now. I got a real buzz from the Wim Hof method, so I decided to stay away from the pills. I'd agreed to meet Jeff and his team down at the Embarcadero. I didn't realize they wanted me to go jogging. I hate jogging on the best of days, and I really hate it now that I'm so, so hungry. Nothing will help me with jogging. Nothing. Someone could put a million dollars on that bed and said, you have to jog to earn this million dollars. And I'll be like, I'm going to be over here, like chilling out. Whatever. Have you heard the phrase jog on? It's an English phrase. Jog on means just get out of the way. Morning, team. How's it going? Good. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's your name? Justin. Justin. Hi. Yeah. You mate, Vasco, so. okay? No. How do you feel this morning? I don't feel good. <laughs> I didn't feel good yesterday. I, I was really good. busy. Let's, let's run it off. Who goes first? Come on. Okay. Let's go. So we've all not eaten for 36 hours at this point, right? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, solidarity. I'm not sure how these guys do this all the time. I don't run, and this feels like absolute torture. If this is the kind of thing you have to do, starve yourself and then run around and exercise to live forever? I don't know, I think you can count me out of that. Finish line, poo. Yay. Another article about fasting. Clearly with a picture of someone that probably has never fasted in their life and never needs to. I felt awful at the end of the fast. It felt too long and it just felt that it, it didn't really do much for my body. It made my mind really foggy. It's tough. It's mentally tough. And when things are mentally tough and you're trying to use your brain to do mental activities, it's, it seems counterintuitive. I was thinking it in the car, it was like, why the fuck am I doing this? It doesn't make any sense. It seems like it's a gimmick. Like it's a, it's a story I tell my friends to be part of a gang. Doing it for the sake of being part of a technocracy, an ultimate society trying to improve themselves. I don't know. It seems, it seems to be disingenuous. I, I don't feel happier. I don't feel more productive. I don't feel more enlightened. It's not giving me some breakthrough moment. Hashtag, hashtag life, hashtag fasting, hashtag bullshit.
I came down here to find out more about smart drugs, not to starve myself. So I broke my fast in a big way, and now it's time to hit the road. Busy season is back on. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Okay, Paris. Yeah, I can, I can make Paris on the 12th. Who am I going to be speaking to? I've got a bunch of new engagements. I'm going to need some of these new tropics to help me stay on top of my game. In the next month, I'm going to go from Paris to China to San Francisco and from Montreal to Toronto. This is pretty much what my life feels like. Is like <laughs> feels like I'm on a on a conveyor going from place to place most of the time. The nootropics are helping me stay on top of my schedule, but I'm feeling super strung out and I'm certainly not getting the sleep that I need. What brings you to town? What are you working on? Um, I'm running an event later today. Just traveled six hours from Montreal. Uh, yeah, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning for some reason working and uh, I'm gonna keep going now. I'm a bit anxious about my talk tonight. I need to get a lot prepared for this one. With a little help from my nootropic friends. So I've been tracking what I've been taking on a pretty much a daily basis. Uh, when I've had tons of work to do, really needed to focus, I, I've always uh, reached for the smart drugs. As you can see here, I've got like the Rise, Kato and Sprint from the Nutribox people. Silver's the Phenoparacetam and the Gold is the, is the Nupep. So every time I've done these, I started off with the Sprint. So I mean, it was really rushy, lots of been uh, ripped into a, a neutral silver, amazing focus. It felt really, really good. But then about four or five days later, I decided to get into the new pet booster. And this was the one that just made me think better. Everyone's different with smart drugs. And this was the one that's like, oh, wow, this I'm feeling creative. You know, I'm, I'm coming up with new ideas. But on this trip, I wouldn't mind an extra boost. I've heard about an even more powerful smart drug, modafinil. It's prescription. It's something that's engineered a little bit more. It's, it's definitely a focused, you know, uh, drug versus a smart drug, but it sort of falls into that category. Everyone's been talking about modafinil, everyone. One of my friends was like, if I want to get work done and just be left alone for two days, they just do modafinil. If they need to code and code and code and code, that's it. That's everything else just doesn't give them the urgency and the focus that, that they've had before. Modafinil is a prescription drug and rightly so, but people have been going online and ordering it for themselves for off-label use. It was amazing, really. A half hour after taking it, I was intensely zoned in on my presentation. I had new ideas and I was completing it at a way faster rate than I'd expected. So what you working on there? Um, I'm just writing out the introduction uh, to my presentation. Um, really, I don't really want to like talk to anyone right now. Uh, yeah, that's it. With hardly any sleep in the last two days, Modafinil's still working. I hope it continues through to this evening. I met another futurist called Dre LeBray, and he was like me. He came from advertising and data and whatever, and now he's a futurist. And he goes, I love doing what you're doing. We should do your events here. Let's have some fun uh, talking about the dark future. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hi. 
Is that how you say good evening in Toronto? <laughs> I'm being followed by a documentary crew at the moment doing smart drugs, and I took modafinil earlier today, so I'm going to talk really quickly, okay? The kids are all right. And do you know what? The kids are not all right. And this whole presentation is around what we should be really aware of. This is the world that we've created, and it's a happy-go-lucky place. Social media and networks and selfies. If you are sharing any information about your children from any point in their life, especially pictures, you're stealing your child's right to privacy. Are the kids all right? Well, I think it's a countdown, and I think it's a countdown to somewhere pretty dark. Well, that was an illuminating evening. My talk went off better than expected. I was focused, I was sharp. I've been up for 20 hours and the modafinil is still kicking ass. What's your take on, what's your take on modafinil? I don't know, I was running around doing stuff. What time did you take it? Around about midday. Yeah, you'll be up for a while. It really promotes wakefulness. Come to think about it, I don't feel tired at all. Yeah. And at this time last night, you were knackered. Yeah, we were out until we're nine. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. At, we're at dinner, and I was like, oh. And I, I literally went home. Nick, so what's uh, how are you doing there? It's late. I just want to go to sleep. Oh. I'm kind of, kind of restless though. Modafinil definitely keeps you awake. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. More, more than anything else that I've tried, it hits you sideways. It hits you. And it doesn't. You know, <laughs> life feels a little off kilter and a little bit tweaky. So. If I'm awake at 3, I'll be awake at like 9 a.m. And if I'm awake at 9 a.m., I'm awake for the rest of the day. And then by about 3 to 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, I'll be in, in quite a tough place. I'm probably going to sit down and do a bunch of writing now. Um, but it's probably going to be shitty writing because I'm, I'm really tired. This is what biohacking is all about, which is like... Yeah, you push yourself in, in into situations and places where, you know, yeah, that's it. Are you guys going to leave? Or do I have to kick you out? <sighs> well, I'm done. I'm done. I don't need this anymore. Um, Au revoir. If I have time in my life to reflect too much, you know, sometimes you want to avoid the hard questions you're working on personally. You know, it's like there's pressure, you know, when, you, when you're in your 40s and, and you're single and, you know, you hope to have a family and whatever. You put a lot of pressure on yourself. Keep yourself busy, then you don't think about those things, right? After a horrible night's sleep, wired and modafinil really made me think about the short-term gains of smart drugs. I'm feeling pretty stressed and close to burnout again. I gotta go and find a doctor that can tell me what I'm doing wrong.
I spoke to some of my friends in San Francisco and they told me about a medical doctor that also knows about nootropics and biohacking called Molly Maloof. She looks at the balance of everything from normal functions of the body through to supplement and nootropic regimes that can help me. I really want to go and get some advice from her. I can think of plenty of ways that people can get biohacking wrong. One of the first things is with fasting. A lot of people fast when they're really stressed out, and I'm just not convinced that that's great overall for cortisol balance, um, because it puts your body under a state of fight or flight. Hashtag fasting. Hashtag bullshit. Another thing that people get wrong is they, they stack too many supplements all at the same time and have no idea which one is working. And a lot of people don't test before they take things. They just take things willy-nilly, thinking they have problems. Just like when you're trying to diagnose disease and treat disease, you want to know what the problem is. You don't want to just think you know what the problem is. You want to definitely know what you're trying to work on and then work towards that, rather than just trying to take things because you think you need them. What I've learned over the last few years and through medical school was that there's actually a science to wellness and optimizing health, and that it's just as measurable as diseases. And in fact, you can use a lot of the same tools and techniques that you use to interrogate for disease to understand how to optimize a person's body. A lot of people in San Francisco come to me and they already have spreadsheets of supplements that they're already taking. And what they come to me for is to help tweak that list, figure out what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, and to sort of offload some of the management of their health. Molly made me fill out about 23 separate questionnaires about you know, my lifestyle, <laughs> the shape and style of my, uh, of my stools. Um, uh, a whole bunch of different things, just really trying to ascertain what's happening to my body. She also asked me to go and get around about 50 different tests, like blood tests, urine tests, and whatever. It's pretty scary to like suddenly walk in and they're taking like 10 vials of blood and whatever, and you're suddenly looking at things that you never looked at before. So, you know, the wonder of of, is there something wrong here, you know? So, um, but like, she covers the bases. Hey, Molly. Hi, good How's to it see going? you. Yeah, good to see you. So I got your test results. I was just reviewing your questionnaires. Okay, great. And we have plenty to talk about today. Perfect. Um, and what are you most concerned about? I'm most concerned of burning out. I, mm. I fly 40, 50 times a year. I change time zones all the time, sometimes multiple times in a week. My insomnia is bad. I've been trying everything, you know, different kinds of things like fasting. I've been trying nootropics. Yeah, nootropics are interesting. The problem with some nootropics is that we don't always know exactly where they're made. A lot of these companies are online companies that are ordering research chemicals off the internet. When you take nootropics, always ask the person you're getting them from, even the websites, where do they, where do they make them? Right. You know, when, when do they expire? <laughs> what are the risks? What are the benefits? What are the things that I should be concerned about? I think that nootropics are great, but I also think that a lot of people don't have the basics down. They're not doing the things that they need to do, like the sleep, the nutrition, the exercise, the stress management, and they're trying to take a shortcut. Right. Unfortunately, the shortcuts, they don't always work as well as the basics. So you have to have both. You've got a couple markers of oxidative stress and inflammation. Your CRP is 2.1, I'd like to see it 0.5. Your homocysteine is uh, 11, and I'd like to see it 5 to 7. So we need to cut these in half at least. You have a history of smoking, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that ended a couple of years ago. Right. But, but like casual smoking, that's still not an excuse, right? Well, that's the thing, that's still yeah. smoking. Yeah. And the thing is, is that your body still has that toxic burden that you had from quitting two years ago. You also have elevated liver enzymes. So that's also possible that like with this constellation, it just tells me that like your body, your liver is doing working overtime right now. Getting the right kind of exercise for you is going to be key. You want to make sure you get a decent amount of yoga in because as we get older, we become less flexible. Weightlifting is important for muscle growth and muscle density and um, cardiovascular exercise for our heart. Mm. And then I'd like to get you to have at least uh, a serving, two servings of vegetables per meal, okay. if you can do that. I mean, that's going to be probably over like six to, six to eight servings of fruits and vegetables a day. But for you to just bump those up, that's going to help with that detoxification because it's going to, the fiber is just going to be super helpful for, your, for your, um, your gut function. Molly basically told me to ease off on the nootropics until I got some proper sleep. She made me change my diet and start exercising. 
When I was back home for a couple of weeks, I had time to try out this new health regime. I started eating healthier and even started cooking for myself. Good, nice, good. Rip the floor apart. Come on, Rick. Nice. I work out twice a week with my trainer. And done. Tight, tight. Here, a little bit better. Last one. Which is really hard to fit in with my travel, let me tell you. Last one, let's try. Oh. I was taking supplements as per Molly's suggestion, as well as adding some that Eric recommended. One for my liver detoxification, a myriad of vitamins, some magnesium, trying to boost my immune system and increase my energy. I also hooked up with Nootropics when I needed to double down on work and when the schedule was getting tight. Hi, 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 how are you? <laughs> Thank you. We're still actually looking for as well as an MC. <laughs> but to be honest about it, this extra health regime was just adding to my work. My stress levels were just not reducing. In fact, I was getting more stressed trying to track my health on top of the busy work schedule. And I'd exhausted all the biohacking options out there. I mean, no doubt I was getting more physically fit, but I was still pretty worn out. I called Dr. Molly for some advice and she recommended that I take a break and talk to a life coach down in San Francisco. Very West Coast indeed. When you come into these types of situations, um, when you've tried everything, it often helps to take a step back and slow down and think about, um, or just not think and have a practice of just being you and it might be hard to know what that is at first um tell me if there was a time when you haven't experienced this this kind of state of burnout or this feeling that you're getting close to burnout do you remember a time yeah i mean it's pretty tough it's quite a long time ago there, there, there were a couple of periods in my life where i just quit work just to write music for six months or a year. So there you go, so I, music. I, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe maybe I go back to that. Um, but I don't want to stop, right? You know, just being a workaholic and working so hard, it's, um, I'm trying to avoid the situation I had when I was growing up, which I didn't have any money. I, mm. And people around me would say, oh, you, you don't have anything. And I, I've, I just work really hard to ensure that I have more than I need. Getting vulnerable. Yeah, getting vulnerable. <laughs> Like getting vulnerable with it, yeah, it, it, it feels very emotional. When I when I talk about, you know, tapping into that, you know, you, know, you, you work so hard because, you know, it is, it's, it, it's a direct visceral reaction to, you know, not having money when I was at university, not having money when I was growing up, never like having the abundance I saw people around me having, never getting bought. Did anyone new things, make right? fun of you for it? Oh, all the time. There's a few things that, that um, I would recommend. Slow down. We are like going faster and faster and using these nootropics or supplements and, and uh, psychedelics, for example, to accelerate and to, to improve and optimize. It seems uh, mutually exclusive or at odds when we think about uh, going back to the basics and reconnecting with ourselves. For the last eight months, I've been chasing my own tail, taking new tropics to do more work, but I've never really stopped to question why I'm working so hard. Maybe I need to stop more often and listen to my body instead of trying to bulldoze my way through. So I've been traveling around North America and I've been getting involved in a scene called biohacking. I've met people that have encouraged me to get involved with everything from nootropics and smart drugs, sitting in hyperbaric chambers, putting um, cranial stimulation devices on my head to try and optimize who I am, more focus, more attention, more ability. And through all of this experimentation, it's made me realize something. We're not limitless as humans, nor should we be. 
And if we come back and focus in on who we are, that means that we can put into focus what we need to do with our culture and how that's changing with technology. We used to work with our hands, building things. And then we're in the knowledge economy right now, we're working with our heads. Going forward, we're gonna work with our hearts. That's how the world is gonna change. And that's the wisdom that we need to take us into the future. We're headed into a brave new world. People expect us to do more and to be more and to achieve more. But we can't lose sight of who we really are. We're humans. We're mothers and fathers, we're family members. And that's what's really important in life. <laughs>